Innovation, imagination, wonder. These are just some of the words used to describe Dr. Harvey Passes. Dr. Passes explores interesting people and ideas that will stimulate you. He questions the people who develop, create, and employ novel concepts in business and everyday lives. He especially loves to speak with successful people. How did they do it? How can you do it too? So let's join Dr. Harvey Passes in his quest of wonder and curiosity as we watch Dr. Harvey Passes Presents. You know, we did a wonderful show recently on the beautiful white wines of South Africa. Now, I know that's pretty far away from Long Island, but we did some great, great tasting on some fabulous wines because they're doing some interesting, unique, innovative things there. And I always like to bring you interesting, innovative things. Sometimes it happens on Long Island, other times it doesn't. But I have someone from Long Island who is bringing it to you from South Africa. And before we continue, I want to bring to you Peter Morales. Peter, great to have you back, buddy. Thank you, Harvey. Nice it's to see you. Great to see you again. Mm -hmm. I had so much fun with you the last time we did our white wine tasting. It was just a joy. It was great. I learned a okay. lot from you about the culture and the food and the people of South Africa. And then I pleaded with you. I cajoled you. <laughs> well, I didn't have to do that much. But anyway, I said, let's come on back and let's do now a whole show of red wines. And we yeah. got a forest of bottles here. We do. Red wines. We so do. we better get right down to it. A vineyard. A vineyard. We got a vineyard. Exactly <laughs> right. So let's begin. And uh, we'll pour our first wine. And while we're pouring our first wine, uh, we're going to talk a little bit, since you are an importer, and that means you travel the world in search of interesting wine that yes. you bring in. You're a wine importer. Yeah. And uh, one of your places of great interest is South Africa. So you're knowledgeable, not just on the wines, but the food, the people. And we're going to go into some of that. Okay. So the first wine. What are we drinking here? What, what are we tasting? You're tasting Root Constantia. Oh, God bless you. Remember your <laughs> practice. You That's were right. supposed to practice That's on right. the pronunciation. I did. I did. I did. Root Constancia, Ruta. 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 That's Ruta. It. There you go. There Ruta. You go. Okay, with the capital Ru. Ruta Constancia. Okay, the, what kind of a wine is this? Uh, this first wine we're tasting is Ruta Constancia Rude. This is a, a blended red wine. A blended uh, red wine. Cabernet, Merlot, a little bit of uh, Pinotage, and uh, a little bit of Shiraz. They take the, uh, from their reserve uh, blocks. Right. They take a certain percentage of that every year, and they make the rude. This has been a very famous rude, meaning red, Constantia, meaning big, so big red. And uh, this 1685, this estate was founded, and people 1685, like 1685. People don't realize that that yeah. winemaking goes back so far. Yeah. In South Africa. Well, this was one of the original plots of land by the uh, governor van der Stel from the Dutch East India Trading Company. Hmm. Wow. Big nose. It's interesting. I've always noticed that wines from South Africa, there's a, there's a hardiness to the wines, even their milder wines. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Full of flavor. Very flavorful. Shock full of flavor. I mean. Nice red berries. Mmm. But it full on the palate. I mean, just balanced, well balanced wine. Here. Would you put this wine away? I don't mean in your belly, but would you put this you wine know, away? You know, the or, or, or the, uh, the rude is something that you want to drink within four to five years usually. Uh, can it be put away? Absolutely. This is from a cooler weather climate there, for, as far as reds are concerned. Wines are hearty. Yeah, yeah, and and but the the concentrated flavors that you have on it. And uh, the, the basicity, again, in the soil there, it, it sets up for aging wines. These were wines that uh, English nobility used to buy. Napoleon used to bring his wines from there. So uh, That's cool. Uh, this, this estate is very storied. This wine is great. And uh, um, by the way, can you point on the map where we are here? In this yeah, region? that's the Constantia region, which is right here. Remember, if you remember, around right, Cape, Cape Town, Town there, right here, overlooking okay. False Bay. Okay. So it gives, it, it has those currents that come up the chute, sort of uh, up into Napa and Sonoma, right, out right, of right, the right, San right, Francisco right. Bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I that's like that's False it, Bay. It's a, there. I, I say Peconic Bay, but you know. Yeah, Peconic Bay, absolutely. <laughs> I well, must, I must remember, I live in <laughs> on Long Island. Or well, well, Sound, you know, the Long Island Sound. Yeah. Okay, our next wine that we have here now is Rudeberg. Rudeberg. Yeah, you have that perfect. That means red mountain. Berg means red. Rude is 
excuse me, Berg means mountain, mountain. and Rude is red. So, uh, yeah, listen to the music it makes. <laughs> Rudeberg is uh, made by KWV, one of the uh, greatest wine producers in, in the country, mm -hmm. and the company that was responsible for saving the South African wine industry and uh, exported wines from many different estates for many years. Uh, Rudeberg, again, is a Bordeaux style blend in South Africa. It really starts to speak to the soils of that area of the world, the terroir. And the, the uh, remember the last time we talked, we talked about the uh, varying soil types in that region of the world. Mm -hmm. Archaeologists have said these are some of the oldest soils in the world. And when you start to drink South African reds, now you start to see the flavor components that emanates from the soil in that area. There's such a hardiness to these wines. It's, it's reminiscent maybe of, a, of, of, a, of a, uh, either an, an old, I know I'm stretching here, an old burgundy that's got all that earthiness to it. That barnyardy, et cetera. Yeah. You know, I like that. Well, you, you, I like that. Or a Rhone wine. Yeah, what you're getting is the original. Again, remember the French, the Dutch, and, and the collaboration of some of these great winemakers mm. that came to South Africa. This is what you're seeing in the wines. And this has uh, really maintained the same European flair to it. These wines, these wines are just outstanding. I mean, the, I, I, I will predict that for the rest of the wines that are on the table here, if I just had a big, hearty um, porterhouse on a grill that was had butter on it and that had just salt and pepper and just uh, just real big food. Yeah. These wines would just accompany it beautifully. It, it does. Uh, South African reds go well with grilled meats, but they can stand up to food and, and ripe cheeses. Mm. You take this rutabaga with a nice, ripe cheese. Uh, it doesn't matter across the spectrum. The acid balance is there. But this is an 03 Rutabaga. It's 07 right now, four years. But this wine is just coming into itself. Wow. Wow. Just beautiful. Now, we have a wine here that has the name Peter Andrew. What's significant about the name Peter Andrew? Well, well, well. Uh, Come I on. Had, I see I a had, smile on your face. <laughs> I, this is a very special wine to me. Tell I, us why. I put the endorsement on this wine. You know, of my 19 years in this international wine business, uh, I part of our work in South Africa is uh, our philanthropic project, and it's called Vision 57. And Vision 57. What is Vision 57? Uh, great question. When I first went to South Africa, right, I walked through the vineyards and fields and and. A few of the estates had an actual actual schoolhouses on them where the vineyard workers, children, actually attend school during the day while their, their parents are working the field. <laughs> and I toured some of these schools, and, and what I found were, you know, conditions that were challenging. The children didn't have pencils and erasers and books and things. And uh, before I even traded our first bottle, I said, look, we, we have to send some pencils and erasers here. I realize why I've landed here now. So uh, we started the project, and we named it Vision 57. And uh, we are able to, every bottle of South African wine that we sell in the United States, a portion of that, 5% of the net proceeds, goes back to buy pencils, books, erasers, help with school fees. And uh, our partner is Rutgers University out in New Jersey. Wow. We support their teachers. They go down there for two weeks every year and exchange with the South African teachers. And this what program, a noble thing to do. Yeah, it's been going for over eight years, seven, eight years now. Wow, you're, you know, I admire you for that. That's a marvelous thing that you do. So the That's Peter great. Andrew Ingenium, though, yes. uh, obviously, for me to endorse and put my signature as a wine purveyor on this label, we're dedicating 40% of, of the Ingenium. It's uh, only five barrels a year are made of Ingenium. Right. But uh, Durkee Markle, the, the owner and viticulturist, and Willem Kritzinger mm -hmm. uh, have collaborated with me. Ingenium means collaboration of brilliance. So mm -hmm. myself, Durkee, and, and Willem have collaborated to come up with a, a, a red blend here that we hope that the world enjoys. I, I, I love this wine. As you're talking, I'm listening to you, but I'm also getting this wonderful sensory uh, stimulation here of this, of this wine. This is a very elegant wine that uh, this it's still it's still oaked yeah i mean mm, it's still tannined we think we have it all here uh, the pencil lead uh, the, the, but they have the soils there on that property so uh, we felt that it, it had all the components but it was ageable this wine can last 12 13 years and uh this is 03 which is the maiden voyage so we're pleased. Well, this this is just a fabulous elegant wine all, all these wines are stunning they're stunning and 
people should know that you can you know every now and then you might want to leave long island and try a different wine other than just a long island wine and that's ok but it's nice to know you can drink some of these south african wines because they're they're just the marvelous they're full of flavor they're terrific thanks for those compliments yeah, and again wonderful. i'll share it with the winemakers back in cape town but the bottom line is the europeans have known this secret for a long time and americans are just there's learning now realizing that some of the gems that are down there. Absolutely. Who knows? Maybe I'll get a chance to uh, tell the winemaker face to face. You uh, will. In you South will. Africa. <laughs> we said we were going to do We'd that. We'd love to do a TV show there. Well, that you've been threatening, and uh, I open arms. Okay. You tell me when. All right. Here, then we, we, we have to discuss that later on. Okay. Exactly, so that we can we can put that together. That would be absolutely terrific. I'd love to do a show in South Africa and um, to bring it back here and show everything from the, uh, the wonderful mountains. And from what I understand, it's one of the most beautiful places to visit. And the food is outstanding. Again, as I told you, it's a flora, one of the top flora kingdoms in the world with over 8,000 species of different plant and flower life. And I love salad. So, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> what are we drinking here now? Ruta. I think you, you went back to Hrut Constantia, back okay. to the Constantia region, right, which right we showed you before. Right. And uh, this is a Merlot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, t a cooler weather Merlot. Now everyone uh, you know, knows Merlots from different parts of the world. Right. But as you have said in your other shows, you know, you take the same clone or, or vine and you plant it in different soil. Right. And, and you know that some of the characteristics of that uh, uh, vine are there, or a noble grape are, are showing, but right. a little bit different flavor. Is it 100%? Yes. Okay. And uh, it comes from what? what Nevere oak? French oak? Oh, it's amazing. All the wines, you, you, can, you can smell, you know, maybe a blueberry or something coming up the from red, Merlot. The red, yes. Uh, but there's still a signature. I'm beginning to see and catch the signature of a South African wine. Yes. It still has got that, uh, and this is the a mineral. positive thing. There's a leather, there's mineral, there's petrol, yes. there's earthiness to it. Correct. It's fabulous. Yeah. Good backbone. But it's clean wine. You clean can find wine. some earthy wines that across the palate, it just throws things out of balance. I think you find clean wines here. These wines are outrageous. This is an O2. O2, O2 Merlot. And, and as I told you before, I, I think, I think people are racing through wine vintages too quickly. At one time, you used to go to restaurants, and you would hope the guy comes out and says, I got an 82 something for you. What? Now people are 2005, I want a 2005 red. That's crazy. This is an O2. This so. wine could still hang around. It's got, oh, it's got right. legs on it. It has legs. It's got legs, absolutely. I've got to tell you something. I mean, I've done my fair share of tasting wines in my lifetime. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick this as a Merlot to start with. If you said, you know, a blind tasting, what is it? I'd never say that in Merlot. Because Merlot, uh, I, I happen to like Merlot, um, but the, the Merlot can have somewhat more suppleness to it, um, some more elegance to it. Not that this isn't. It's just that this wine's got a lot of hearty character. That I, I no normally don't pin on a Merlot. Remember what Merlot was developed for, or originally Merlot adding. was that adding and blending, adding, blending and, and, and pulling Bordeaux. things together. Right. And then I think female drinkers in America got crazy over Merlot. They started calling it Marlowe and this and that. But the bottom line was <laughs> they were drinking it. Right. And and people, winemakers started structuring Merlots to, to fit the palate as opposed to the characteristic of the original grape, I feel. Sell the, sell so the market with the market wants. We're going back, and, and what we have here is a depiction of that traditional European style mm. of Merlot. Superb. Superb. Cheers. Each one of these are winners. Each one of these are winners. Absolutely. Just fabulous. We go next to oh, Pinotage. Now, this is yes. a signature. This is absolutely a signature of South Africa, yes. the Pinotage. Tell us a little bit about why this is a signature. The Pinotage was developed in 1925 by Dr. Perold, Abraham Perold, and it's a uh, hybrid. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a blend, it's a hybrid. Pinot Noir uh, grafted onto uh, a Cinso rootstock. Mm -hmm. I love and, 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 uh Pinot Noir is a finicky grape in any part of the world to, to, to work with. And South Africa, the climb and temper, ideal climate, but Pinot Noir is still very finicky. And they came up with Pinotage. The only place in the world Pinotage grows successfully right now <laughs> is South Africa. And uh, you know, there are many different styles. There are many people that have said to me, oh, I don't like Pinotage. But I've tried this and that and the other. That's right. And, 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 but I feel I have one of the four or five best Pinotages out of that country and restaurants are going crazy for it. 
I'm selling through every drop of Pinotage I bring into the United States. So well, someone's drinking. I must tell you, whenever I've served Pinotage, most of my guests at the table uh, normally uh, turn away from it because they Americans, unless they're really sophisticated and, and worldly in their, in, their, in their pursuit of wine, they find that this wine is a little bit more than they can handle. There's a lot, usually there's been a lot of bacon, a lot of smoked bacon, a lot of leather, and that kind of wine. I'm eager to see what this wine is like. I, I think the, the wine producers that I work with, mm -hmm. they use the elegance and their skill in winemaking because if you don't handle Pinot Noir correctly, mm. you're still going to screw it up. This and and this is not too far in grapes. It's Pinot Noir mm. and Hermitage or Pinot Noir Cinso. So it's not too far in grapes. This is not at all what I have tasted. Look, this is not at all. This is replacing this is wonderful. This is replacing red Zinfandel. This is wonderful. As a no, barbecue this wine. Is not no, but, yes, but yes, as yes, a barbecue yes. wine. Most people most people usually have red zins at their barbecues yeah, every year. For good reason. Right. We've turned them on to Pinotage this and people are great. crazy with the flavors. This is great. South Africa is a huge barbecue country. Mm -hmm. They love their what's called braai. What's braai? Braai is an, uh, what we would call barbecue. Oh, braai is the and, term And they, they marinate their meats weeks in advance, and a, a weekend braai to a South African is would heaven. good to, it's heaven. It's heaven. And just like us in the summertime, you know, a, a grill a grill out, a barbecue, a cookout, it's heaven. That's what. I can't wait to go to a braai with you. <laughs> I can't wait to do that. This mm. wine is nothing at all what I expected. Nothing at Look, all what I expect. The cherry fruit on this. Oh. Think about this with a grilled hamburger or a grilled cheeseburger. Mmm. Wonderful. But some nice barbecue chicken. Oh. A little rosemary. Absolutely. And, come on. You're killing me now. I'm, I'm hungry. trying to make you hungry. I'm it's, hungry. It's almost lunchtime. It's anyway. almost lunchtime. Yeah, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is fabulous. This huh? is absolutely fabulous. Terrific. Now, what are we looking here now? Tomorrow? This is tomorrow. Another pinotage. Another pinotage. Is this uh, from a, uh, this is a different This is from an producer. estate. This is an estate now. Okay. The one Ooh, we had before was KWV. Deeper, dark cherry. Color is, is, would you agree with me? Yes. Color is deeper on this. Absolutely. This is from the Bellevue Estate. Tomorrow is the actual name of one of their, their prized horses on that estate. I see. So, so uh, tomorrow. Yeah, but we do very well with this label. Hmm. By the way, all the labels are very, very attractive looking, very elegant looking. Yeah, but there's a tradition in these ah. labels. This is not trying to fireball. It's not... Uh, you know, nothing again. It's not critter label. It's serious wine label that you can put in your cellar, right. lay down, and bring out and say, right. I got this. You remember, we, we are in the, the luxury business. Yeah, and, and true. And, you know, the labels need to speak to that. That's true. Now, now, you're, now i got to tell you, these have all been fabulous wines. Now we're stepping up into a little bit of complexity here. The nose is outrageous. What year is this? This is 05. 05. Nonetheless, would you mind and you know what that, that over here? Sure. 05. The, the, this nose is very complex. My God, I'm going all, all places in here with this nose. This, you, you, you're going to get it from that, the soils in that area, you know, some of the vegetal characteristics, or, or the, you're going to get a little bit of mintiness. Uh, some people call it a little bit of, of, of maybe thyme. Eucalyptus. Yeah, and you get a little cinnamon also. Absolutely. But this is the thing that marries to various types of I foods. I love this wine. A chef can't outrun this very easily. No, I love this wine. You know what we do this with? Mm. Grilled cod, uh, codfish. Wow. This is one of those I would never reds. Think of that. You chill this down just a little bit, mm -hmm. and this goes both ways. Fish. Or, so that red red wine with, with red meats and white wine with white meats, that's mm. out the window, especially out of the Cape of Good Hope wines. As long as you're grilling it. Because if you have your, if you have your, your what you call it again, your grill? No, not necessarily grilling, grilling fish. The grill fish. to stand up to The this. grill would stand up to it, that's but, what I'm but even, we had a, a, a crusted, uh, I was working with uh, Chef, Chef uh, Samuelson and his team. And, and uh, we had a team of chefs, 12 of them, that night, and I showed them. I went away from traditional white wines. We went with Pinotage with their crusted and uh, deep uh, crusted uh, codfish. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. They, they couldn't believe the flavors that it grew up, and it just balanced well against the fish. I love this wine. I love this wine. It's this our wine. It's, it's, it's you amazing. know, and this is 2005. This is an estate wine, but 2005 sure. because we've run through this. People are crazy about Pinotage in this nah, country. It's great. It is. This is not at all 
what I was expecting. Not at all what I was expecting. <laughs> well, I'm glad I, I was expecting something that was just, it was just hearty and heavy. When I can show a master like you no, who has seen everything. Very kind. It's very kind for you to say that. Switch, because we're going out to, we're the, going to the back. Over to, starting yeah, here. Starting there, yeah. So maybe you want to switch glasses yeah, for no do, real reason, except yeah. we got them. <laughs> okay, so now you're going to Cathedral Cellar Shiraz. Uh, Cathedral Cellar is the vaulted old cellars uh, in uh, the KWV facility. They, they, these are some of the most highly awarded wines in the world for, for uh, over 50 years uh, internationally. But this is a Shiraz, and uh, South African Shiraz, as you're going to pick up, doesn't punch you in the nose and say like Shiraz. Like Australia does. No. But it's an elegant, long-distance runner. Mm, totally different nose, boy, than, than everything we've had here. Yeah, it's an elegant long distance runner, and and this is uh, what what vintage is this? I we're sh we're looking at here. Is that old? Oh one? two. Oh two. Oh two. Yeah, so th th this should probably be decanted. Mmm. Wow. Surprise me. This is far from what I expect. That's that's the joy of wine. That's the joy of wine. I mean, you get a chance to taste an old, same like Shiraz. We've had Shiraz a million times. Never had one tasting like this. It's the variation. Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's, it's the got variation. a little bit of muscle on it. It, it has muscle on it's it. And muscle. again, that, that even in 02, it's got time on it. Mm, no question about it. But the red fruits there, it's all there. No, it's fa fabulous wine. This is terrific taking a tour across South Africa like this. Now, Fashendal. Founded in 1685, and that's in God the oh that's right. in the Franschhoek region there. Again, okay. uh, you are taking a tour with these uh, right. around the whole winery, but that's the Franschhoek. That's the original French corner. Franschhoek, French, French. I'm sorry, Franschhoek, the uh, French corner. Yeah. Is that what is that what it means? Yes. And this is fabulous. This is a Cabernet. So now we're tasting our first Cabernet. Yes. It's a reserve. Yes. O one. Now Vachendal from the day that means Wooden Dale. And this Wouldn't is from know. the John Cecil Rhodes of the founder. Yeah, that's all exactly. Right. You remember. Yep. So these it goes way back. All these all these vineyards. Yeah. Jeez. 1685. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mm. Un people have to understand that there's enough history here to rival France and other areas. Oh my gosh. Mm. Talk about wood. I mean, I'm getting bark. But your red fruit, your lead pencil is there. The tannin structure yeah. there, that grip. You need a steak. I need a steak. Um, steak, please. <laughs> one of the people, one of the camera people here, you want to lock down the cameras. Let's get a steak and let's continue the show, all right? Don't forget the steak knives. Absolutely, the steak knives. The way I feel right now, I wouldn't you need a knife. This. Yeah, you got to cut this. It's a big wine. Mm. It needs to be handled correctly. Mmm. Mmm. Outrageous. Outrageous! Wow, unbelievable! Yeah. I mean, I see as where I, I see the way you've organized these wines. The wines are getting more intense; they're getting more complex. Yeah. You get yourself over here. You got a little wine on you, and now Thank it's you. gone. Thank now you. On TV. Thank you. Yeah, so, make me look good. All right. So they're becoming more intense, more complex, and uh, I can see that uh, enjoying these with just all this meat. Now here's a wine. Cheese that, too. Don't forget oh, your cheese. I, I never and... forget cheese. But, but let me go off for a minute. Go ahead. You, you can do pasta and sauces. A number mm. of uh, fine Italian and Mediterranean restaurants around go the country well with this. are really starting to, to, to buy these wines in now and serve them with the customers because they're, they're great food wines. I'll tell you, there's something about these wines that impress me, and that is their spice to them. Yeah. Yeah. And I only think of Italian wines when I think of spice. Yeah. Or a Zinfandel. Uh, maybe on occasion, Syrah, a Petit Syrah. But these wines have good spice. I totally agree with you. Putting these up with a highly spiced Italian dish might be a lot of fun uh, with Tony. No yeah, last, na no last names here, but absolutely. with Tony, sit down and we have some nice spiced sauce and open up something here in a brown bag. And I think he'd be shocked to know that it's not an Italian wine. It's That's fabulous. Right. Let's do it. That would be great fun. This is uh, a cab, 03, Verhelligen. Verhelligen. Which means situated far away. Situated because far where away. the estate is located, it's in, uh, in the Stellenbosch region here. Right. 
And it's, it used to be uh, a few wagon, wagon days by, from the Cape of Good Hope where mm -hmm. the shapes used to go in. So it was said it was situated far away. That but, was but this is the estate. This is the blueprint of, of South African history. This is, ama this is amazing. This is amazing. Why these are just incredible. They're becoming more intense, more berry-like, more fresh berries. And you're saying these wines can stand aging. This is fabulous. we got about three minutes left. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how time is going here. Um, now, in that three minutes, I want you to talk a little bit. What I would like to get uh, is, do you want to uh, hit any of these two, or do you yeah, want to go yeah, right into the port? To talk to me. No, no, we need to, we need to go to, uh, let's, let's taste the Peril. Fine. Uh, Abraham Peril, we mentioned before. Yes. But this is a single estate, single vineyard Shiraz. This is 1998, I believe. Uh, oh, wow. You. This is a gem. We, we may have maybe... 35, 40 cases of this left in the country, in the whole world of this 1998. Really? Yeah. Ooh. Gorgeous wine. Oh, wow. Uh, this is a wine that can stand up till 2013, Ooh. 2014 easily or more if you keep like it under Grange. the right condition. Exactly. Like Grange. Like Penfold's Grange. Wow. Massive, big, mm -hmm. intense, delicious fruit. My God. A berry coming through. I'm... I'm I'm getting blueberry in here. You need a big leg of lamb, uh, you know, lamb chops, veal chops, asabuco. Stop it! You're killing me. You, you name it. You're, you're killing me here. You're absolutely murdering me. Now that 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 wine, you know, has been one of the icons. The Verlier and V we have also, which uh, I only got 98 cases of this to sell to sell in the whole country. A gorgeous wine. Now you got a port. Oh, now people only think of Portugal for port. But you have a late bottled vintage '93 of port. What kind of grapes do they use for this? Oh, uh, uh, do you know? Tinta Barroca, Sousa, uh, Tordiega Nacional, all really? the traditional port grapes. Really? Remember what I told you. You see out there in the Outsorn area? Yes. Out there. Yep. That's semi arid. The Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. That's where all the port grapes and, and the sweet muscadels dry. and dry, but oh, wow. great character to these wines. Mmm. cheese with this. Is that beautiful? I need some figs. Well balanced, figs, uh, overpowering. Cheese. We did that as a cigar tasting uh, a few weeks ago and the guys were all rolling their cigars in it and it, it was just fabulous it's and they couldn't amazing. believe and again they said we, we didn't realize South Africa had such brilliant port wines. That's that's the whole thing. This this is an eye opener. The it's dessert wine. Well the dessert wines remember what you tasted the last time. Uh, listen to me. Yes, I'm giving I'm this to you. To Here's you. a photo. <laughs> that we got of you the last time you were on the show. It says, Peter Morales, emissary and teacher of international culture and wine to us all. And I signed my name. See if you can get a shot of this. Raise your hand. Which camera do I put this in front of? Everybody raises their hand. <laughs> what are you guys trying to drive me nuts here? So get a shot of this. See if I'm in there. And uh, this is a little present. And uh, there we go. There we go. I'll get you up. I'm driving my camera people nuts. And that's great, and I really appreciate it. You know, you're some kind of guy, Peter. No, thank you very some much kind of for guy. having Take me this. on your show, and thank yeah, you for the it's gift. Great. Uh, terrific, and here's a copy of the last show we did. Thank you very much. You did such a, such a great job. I appreciate all that you're doing here for helping us understand South African wines and to see that, hey, there's more than wine in, in France. It's well, all around the world. I, I think the bottom line with, with people who love food and wine, journey to adventure. And you can't get on a plane you know, that easily every night and go there, but... Working with guys like me, we can bring it to your home. And that's is, what we're doing. Which here. is great. Yeah. Which so. is great. You can just put on your jeans, put on some sloppy lay sneakers, and lay back and have a great bottle of wine, cook yourself a great meal, and just enjoy learning all about these regions. I, I think it's, uh, it's terrific. You've got other regions, right? Yeah, we do Argentina, we do Spain, we do Italy. Uh, you know, we do some things out of uh, out of Ireland that are not wine related, but uh, okay. You're going to come back. We'll go for other areas, right? Okay, sounds okay. good. Thank Peter you very Morales, much for inviting me. Thank you very, very much. Thank you're you. my kind of guy. Thank you. And uh, you. you're my kind of person, also. I hope you enjoyed being with us because this was great fun. So, Dr. Pass is saying, until next time, whatever you do, like Peter Morales, <laughs> do it with passion. Take care. So long. Quick little toast, my friend. Salute. Salute. Ah.